It's about 22 years ago now. We were experiencing a move of God. The wine we were on campus. People were giving their lives to Christ without an evangelist. The conviction of God broke upon the campus and so many things were happening that we could not explain. It was obvious that we were immature as um, preachers and teachers to actually capture the full scope of that which God wanted to do. We, uh, as many people, because there were so many people that came to me personally to be led to Christ, and we set up um, a Holy Ghost chamber on the tennis court where we served men, Holy Ghost, as wine. Yes. And I was one of the people that functioned in that capacity. So when we get news of someone that gave his life to Christ, I was the Holy Ghost bartender, serving life. And so many things were happening at the same time. We were seeing the book of Acts of the Apostles come alive. But one morning, I went to pray. It was 5 a.m. in the morning. I was in the prayer place. And unfortunately, I was the only one there that day. And the Holy Ghost came to me. And when he came to me, he said, Son, unfortunately, I will have to leave. That was not a good, a good news. That was not the kind of news we were expecting because things were breaking out. Things were breaking out. And it was in those days that I sensed the anointing for the first time that when I preached the gospel, people fall on that power. You say you're going? We're just getting started. Hallelujah. That was how that revival began to die. But before he left, he said, I will come again. For many years, I waited. I waited for a sign. I waited for something that will reveal that God was going to come. Waited for 10 years in intercession, in the place of fasting, in the place of prayer. And there was no sign. And when we say we are waiting, What we are waiting for is not the anointing that knocks men down. That's not what we are saying we are waiting for. We were growing in the anointing. People were getting healed. But there was something I saw on campus. It was not in church. I know how many members of Black Axe threw away the axe and got transformed. And they were so full of God that even the members of Black Axe were afraid of them. It happened on campus. I remember one day I woke up from my room and I needed water to have my bath before I go for lectures. And the, the line of buckets was impossible. And when I came to the place, it, it was a black axe member that took my bucket, put it where his was, and he came and took the place that I was. Hallelujah. Yes, when I walk into the common room those days, people that smoke will stop smoking. I'm not their father. But there was something that was happening that I could not understand. We could not fully articulate. Great things. Great things. I remember we prayed for about two people that were dead on campus and they came back to life. Great things taking place. And then the Holy Ghost now said, sorry, I have to leave. In the midst of the action, we were just getting started. What grieved you so much that you need to leave now? You have set us up. Because we were, we were going through the motion. And I realized that if you are walking with the Holy Ghost, anytime you ever say, I got it, in that same time, you lost it. We were not educated. And we felt that the things that happened to Charles Finney was beginning to happen to us. Hallelujah. Many they, they were among us that felt they were the best thing that happened to Christianity at that time because the hand of God was strong. And the Holy Ghost came and said, Sorry, I must leave. But I will be back again. And we waited long. We waited long, hoping that He would show a sign as time went on. A nation that I knew that God had a covenant with, even Nigeria, 
was beginning to enter into the shadows and into darkness. And I was wondering, when, how, when will you come? It was easier for you to have come five years ago. Now we are overtaken by gross darkness. When will it please you to remember the blood of the precious that were slain on the mountain? And he kept mute for 12 years. It was 12 years. That is how many years now? 22 years. That he now showed a sign. It's time for me to come back. I asked this question why did you leave? I never got an answer for 22 years. But he says he's coming back. Turn your Bible to the book of. Ecclesiastes chapter 11. It's 11 years ago now. I was in my sitting room. I was praying 4 a.m. in the morning. And Jesus walks through the wall and he comes in. And when he came in, I was wondering because he had no shoes on. And I was, I was afraid. I said, Lord, you don't have any shoes on. What's the problem? Then he quoted that scripture to me in the book of Joshua chapter 1. That everywhere the sole of your feet shall tread upon, it shall be given unto you as a possession. Then I knew that the reason for which he came was he wanted to claim grounds. He reached out and called me, and my body left my spirit. And then we went to a place which I have come to realize that is Donatus village called Jatoka. But I did not know it was that was a place. And he began to curse the altar there. And when he cursed the altar, the altar fell. And the memory of the altar passed away. We went to another place in Tivla. That place, I have not, I have not discovered that place. Because I know this first place, which is Jatoka, was this shrine was sited on a grave. The second place, I don't know what, where it was. And he spoke. And the altar fell. I think we went for about three rounds. And then we came back to my sitting room again. And then he turned his back. I said, ah, no, no, what of the poverty in the land? You didn't address the poverty. You didn't address the darkness. There's a surge of demonic activity you didn't speak about. And Jesus said, I will return. That is to comfort me. This one was 11 years ago. The first one was what? 22 years ago. I've only shared this one with a few people. He said, I will return. Blessed are they that believe in me. That's what he said. So every time I celebrate a birthday, I go back to God. I said, you said you were going to come back. We don't know how you will come back. We don't know when you will come back. But if you want to come back, come quickly. Because the tokens of the kingdom are stolen. And it's easier to be afraid than to be in faith. So many questions begging for answers. And it seems there are no voices in the territory to bring perspective. If you want to come, come quickly. You didn't answer me until 2019. So it's time to come. Meanwhile, I need to tell you a story from heaven. Because when the issue of Nigeria was brought up in the council, most of the elders pleaded with God to shift his favor from this country to another country. Yes. In fact, Ghana was proposed highly in the chambers. I'm telling you what I saw from heaven. 
If it were democracy, God's face would have turned from Nigeria. The first, probably the first thing. Okay. Let's leave that. The contention was so strong. And then God revealed that the reason why his face cannot be turned from Nigeria was because he entered into deep covenants with our ancestors. Not because of what? There were vows that he made. There were covenants that he made with our ancestors. And at this point in time, it is not consistent with his nature for him to forget those covenants that are already operational. It was on the strength of that that God reassured that his covenant with this nation will not be broken. Ecclesiastes. Chapter 11. Cast thy bread upon the waters. For thou shalt find it after many days. Give a portion to seven. And also to eight. For thou knowest not what evil shall come upon the earth. If the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if the tree fall towards the south or towards the north, in the place where the tree falleth, there it shall be. He that observeth the wind shall not sow. And he that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. As thou knowest not what is the way of the spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child. Even so, thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all things. So he said, cast thy bread upon the waters and thou shalt find it after many days. And that's the same principle that is in the book of Genesis chapter 8 from verse 22. What occasioned that exposition in the book of Genesis chapter 8 verse 22 was that Noah was seeking a ground of stability before that time God in his wrath had judged the earth before that time the fall of man had been activated and the governor that was supposed to superintend this realm hallelujah the governor is the one that has the manual for every creature even the Holy Spirit had withdrawn from the physical creation. And that's why the preacher said. What was left. The purposes that were left. In the physical creation. Was vanity upon vanity. Cycles. Uh, levels and degrees. Of vainness being expressed. Because the Holy Spirit. Had withdrawn his services. From the physical creation. It was on the strength of that. That God began to crystallize. The new creation. Because his purposes could no longer be found within the crucible of the old. That was the lamentation that the preacher sustained in the book of Ecclesiastes. And now in Genesis chapter 8, having known this, Noah decided to intercede. And he took clean creatures from the ark and make, made a sacrifice to God. And it, it, we, we will need to investigate what exactly Bible means by clean creatures because at this time Moses had not yet come with his own taxonomy and classification of creatures into clean and unclean. How did Noah know that there were creatures that were clean and creatures that were unclean? Because it was obvious that the clean creatures were not affected by the fall. Their manual was within. The way they were designed to operate 
they still operate that way. Hallelujah. When I teach this, I always make reference to mosquito. I was meant to take food from the nectar flowers. And when that man was lost, it takes blood now. Hallelujah. You might have come here using a bus and you saw a conductor there. If God were to open your eyes to see his true destiny, it is not being a conductor. It was the manual that got lost. And that's why aberrations and the only purpose is sustained in the visible creation were vanity upon what? Vanity. And that's why you can only find your center of gravity with respect to purpose when you stumble upon Christ. And, and, and this intercessor, namely Noah, was trying to find the common ground or possibility in the midst of the fall and in the midst of the chaos. And when he sacrificed the clean creatures, what he was saying to God was, I don't know what you did and what you put in these animals that made them not to suffer from the impact of the overhaul. But we are sacrificing them to you so that you can make life sustainable upon the face of the earth. It was in response to that intercession that God said, as long as the earth remains, those were the variables that he decided to hold constant so that the life of man under the sun can have a predictable possibility in his future. As long as what? Yet remains. Seed time and harvest. No, that's, that's the last one. Cold and heat. Summer and winter. Day and night shall not cease. Now, if we were to dwell on that, you come to realize by according to elementary geography, that the reason for seasons, planting season, hamatan season, is because the earth is revolving around the sun. And the reason for day and night is because the earth is revolving around its axis. Hallelujah. And so, the preacher said, cast your bread upon the waters. And if the rev revolution process continues, you will find it after many days. But when we go into the New Testament, the subject of sowing and reaping is taken to another level. Because in the New Testament, there are only two possible places to sow into. You are either sowing into the flesh or you are sowing into the spirit. Hallelujah. And so when we say, cast thy bread upon the waters, the wise know, keep sowing in the spirit because you will find it after many days. He said, give a portion unto seven. Because when you are sowing into the spirit, that you stand to be discouraged because spiritual things don't manifest this way physical things manifest. If you go to farm and you want to uh, plant corn, you know it will take three months. The expectation is connected to a time frame. But when you are making an investment in the spirit, all your wisdom with respect to return on investment will become useless because God has his own schedule that he walks with. Are you with me? So he said, cast your bread upon the water. He said, you will find it after many days. However, you need to adopt an insurance policy. Are you with me? Because the principle that guarantees a return on investment is as long as the earth remains. Is that true? The seed time and harvest principle is only functional as long as the earth remains. And that's a bad basis for investment because it is possible for the earth not to remain. So what will happen to what you sowed in the natural? Because of that, an insurance policy had to be crystallized just in case the earth is not faithful enough to bring about a return on investment. You, you partake of this insurance policy and the insurance policy requires that you give a portion to seven yeah 
to what? Eight. Because? Eh? Because of what? Oh, you are not with me. Eh? Why did he say we should give a portion to seven and to eight? Because you don't know what evil will come upon the earth. I hope you know that. Was, that's the basis of the first principle. The first principle is as long as the earth remains. That's what cast thy bread upon the waters and you will find it after many days is predicated upon. The next verse is an insurance policy. Just in case the earth is not in place. There is a kind of investment you can make. Are you with me? That even though the earth is not in place, you still have a return on investment. That's the reason for the second verse. It says, give a portion to seven. Yea, to what? Eight. Why? Because you do not know what evil will come upon the earth. So sometimes as you are sowing in the spirit, evil comes upon the earth. Evil. And this evil that comes upon the earth might elongate the time that is required for a return on your investment to find expression. And because of the possibility of the arrival of evil, a policy, an investment, an insurance policy is fabricated as a support system. Let me take you deeper. My, my, my emphasis is verse 5. But we can't jump there. We can't jump there. If you jump there, you will not know that there is a progression of revelation. You will miss out on the protocol. Work with me. Let's do Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26 is a, it's, it's a theater arts piece. Theater arts. You need to be grounded in theater arts for you to understand that. Matthew chapter 26. Clearly. Now this is Acts 1 scene 1. And it came to pass when Jesus finished all these sayings that he said unto his disciples. Ye know that after two days is the feast of the Passover. And the son of man is betrayed to be crucified. Verse 3 is Acts 1, sin 2. Are you following? All right. Then assembled together the chief priests and the scribes and the elders of the people unto the place of the high priest who was called Caiaphas and consulted that they might take Jesus subtly and what? And kill. Jesus was prophesying to his disciples and said, uh, You know, the Passover is close. And because the Passover is close, it is needful for you to know that the Son of Man is going to be betrayed. And the end point of the betrayal is what? Crucifixion. That's Acts 1, scene 1. And the guys in Acts 1, scene 2 were not in the place where Jesus prophesied. But the administrative infrastructure that will bring the prophecy to pass was being coupled together in another place. Are you following? Verse 5. But they said not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar among the people. Now this Acts 2 sin 1 now. When Jesus was in Bethany in the hands of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. When his disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. And when Jesus understood it, because he didn't know the meaning of what was happening at first from the position of the witness of the Holy Spirit. And so the Bible says, When Jesus understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble ye the woman? For she had wrought a good work upon me for the poor. 
for ye shall have the poor always with you, but me ye shall not have always. For in that she has poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Acts 2, scene 1. Acts 1, scene 1, Jesus spoke about the fact that his death was ordained by God to align on the feast of Passover. Acts 1, scene 2. The administrative infrastructure that will bring to pass what he prophesied. They were arranging it. And even though there was a suggestion that he should not be killed on the feast day, lest there be an uproar among the people. So it means it wasn't convenient. We were looking at the security implication. It was going to generate an uproar and they don't want that because it will have attract the Romans. Because at this time, the Jews were not a self-governing nation. And anything that will bring about an upheaval was not good for the government of the time. Suddenly, they left the place where they were meeting initially and went to Bethany, the house of Simon the leper. Now, that guy was a leper that Jesus healed, but they had known him by his predicament. So his name could not be changed easily, even though the leprosy was healed. They had known him for the name we called you for 35 years. You can't change it because there's a miracle. <laughs> he was still Simon. What? The leper. Moses gave the children of Israel a lot of laws that have to do with hygiene. And one of the laws was that when you make a trip and you come to the house of a man your feet should be washed and that was the place of the servant of the house that was part of his duties to ensure that your feet is washed and when Jesus came into the house of Simon the leper even though Simon the leper had gotten a miracle from Jesus Simon did not wash his feet because Simon did not see himself as a servant where Jesus was probably a colleague because he had his own standing in the city so he did not see himself as such a person as to bring himself to that point where he could wash Jesus' feet. So Jesus entered with dirty feet. And then suddenly a woman shows up. A woman that was not invited. Didn't know that Jesus' feet needed attention. Are you with me? A woman that was not in Acts 1, scene 1 or Acts 1, scene 2. Are you with me? Shows up. And when she shows up, she begins to weep on Jesus' feet and wipes it with her hair and unveils the alabaster box. Are you with me? It was not an alabaster bottle. Those days, there was no bottle. And uh, if we read the local account, we see that it was equivalent to a year's wages. That is NYSE money times 12. Now, how much do coppers... Yes, we have a youth cup. How much do you receive now? What? 19.8 times 12. I, I just, I'm trying to do the arithmetic to show us that at least nobody here has had a perfume that costly. Just. Somebody help me with the details. 30 what? 30,000 times 12. What do we have? What? 300 and something. None of us here has had a cologne that is that costly. And meanwhile, this cologne was not manufactured in Jerusalem. It was manufactured in Arabia. And when you are paying the price for the cologne, you also pay for the security because the Arabian desert is full of bandits. You have to pay for security charges. It's not enough for you to buy something from Arabia. You must pay for it to be securely delivered to you in Jerusalem. Are you with me? Huh? Because it was only the cost of the cologne that bothered men like Judas. Not the carriage, the haulage, the movement of the peace. And it happens to be that because this alabaster ointment was in a box, 
you could only use it once. You can't use it and cock it. It's a box. And so if you wanted to use it, you would use it on a high day. Probably on the day of your wedding. And when you unveil the box, it has a symbolic meaning that my life as a woman will be wasted on this man. Hallelujah. But you know what? There was no wedding that day. Another day that you can unveil a box is a burial day. To symbolize the fact that this man, all through his 75 years, 84 years, 93 years, he was being poured forth like a drink offering. And each and every one of us drank from the reality of what he was running with through the days that were appointed unto him. So when you unveil it that day, we know it is symbolic. That what? The drink offering has been poured for. There was no wedding. That day. So it was difficult to understand the meaning of what was happening. It was Jesus that brought the second meaning. No, because traditionally, the reason for unveiling an al alabaster was the first reason. Now, the woman was saying, Jesus, you casted out seven demons from me. If I ever marry, my husband will not be of value like you. So I waste my box on you. Some people in the meeting had designed her from the eye of her past. And in fact, it was on the strength of this that some of the Pharisees that were there, they, they, they say Jesus is not a prophet because of this. Their estimation of Jesus in the prophetic changed because of this woman's visit. And the conclusion that they left with was that Jesus did not make it as a prophet from their own perspective. Because there were so many reasonings that were generated on the strength of the woman's action. So Jesus had to go beyond the natural dimension. Meanwhile, the apostles also had a perspective. If you check the local account, there were two responses from the apostles. The first was from Judas. And Judas said, it's a waste. You know, Judas didn't add Lord. He just said what? It's a waste. He had put together the monetary value of the substance. And from his perspective, we have wasted something. He came from the realm of the economist realm of the financial manager the realm of the financial analyst and his conclusion after debit and credit was what waste that means are you with me in the eyes of people that were unbelievers that had not said yes to jesus this woman was wasting meanwhile the other apostles said lord is a waste even though they added lord it means they had said lord to jesus but their perspective was not different from that of the unbeliever. There were, there, were, there, were, there were perspectives that were rising in the room. And so Jesus decided to enter into the spirit. Because the perspective were too divergent. So, and then the Bible says when he understood it. Because the understanding was not in the natural. Then he told us. That the reason why this woman did what she did. Was to prepare her for her what? For his burial. The woman was not in Acts 1 sin 1. Neither was she in Acts 1 sin 2. She didn't know the need that Jesus had. Are you with me? You know the Bible says, cast your bread upon the waters. That's right. So you will find it after many days. He said, give a portion to seven. Seven means complete. And eight means a new beginning. So when he says give a portion to seven, it means that human beings have a limit to which they can give. And if you try to make a man give beyond this elastic limit, you have just manipulated him. However, a man that gives the eight doesn't give to meet human need. A man that gives the eight gives to meet a need on the heart of God. Because Jesus had a need to be anointed for his burial according to the custom. And it was because it was a woman that anointed him. It had to be a woman that would see him first when he resurrects. The Bible 
says when he had understood it he knew that the entire gesture was put in place for his burial the same barrier that people were planning to there was an administration that was planning to take him out and this woman moved by the revelation of the value of Jesus offered something beyond the need he offered something to meet a need on the heart of God so she gave the eight you know the policy says what give a portion to seven yeah to it and for her a new beginning was carved out without the eight because the reason for the insurance policy is to is to is to cut off the earth element from the return on investment that is captured in that possibility when jesus now spoke to the woman he said wherever the gospel is preached not as long as the earth remains the reason why we need to add an insurance policy you, you have been sowing in the spirit and everybody that looked at you say you are wasting how old see your age when will you return with glad tidings the reason why the return on investment was beveled was because evil came upon the earth so the time frame was adjusted so that the evil could be handled are you with me but the secret that is unveiled is in the insurance policy make sure that your life is perpetually designed to meet the need on the heart of god if you do that even in the midst of the evil there will be a return on investment that is the message of ecclesiastes chapter 1 chapter 11 verse 1 and 2. he now gave us an assurance that if a tree should fall to the north or to the south in the place where it falls that is where it will be that's why the holy spirit did not miss the upper room and and visited your grandfather's your great grandfather's house <laughs> in the place <laughs> where the tree falls that is where it will be it was where they were laboring that the holy spirit appeared he didn't miss the upper room because there was a tree that had fallen there and it had to you know gps gps the gps location of where the holy spirit invaded was where they have been doing some earth shaking things it's in that place that is where it will remain and so we will wait and see if the spirit of god will remain on your life it it, mean, it means that it was your prayer that cut the tree down do you remember when jesus was to be identified john the baptist said anyone upon whom the spirit of god shall descend and what if he rests it means that there is an investment that you have been making that others are not aware of. And in the day that we speak about, the Spirit of God will descend and rest on some men because several investments that were made and it was like madness to continue because it looked like a waste. Everybody that, that looked at you felt you were wasting big but you see in order for you to make meaning sense to the mortars you must be a man of sacrifice what doesn't make sense to men that's what makes sense to God because the Bible says when Jesus had understood it it's only Jesus that was able to understand what happened in that meeting there were several people that left there and said no this is a wasted ministry. There were others that left there and said, Jesus is not a prophet. Because if he had known what sort of woman was this, 
you would have been allergic to her presence but when Jesus understood it the immortals have the capacity to understand investments in the spirit verse 5 captures the season of manifestation that's where my charge will come from in the next 10 minutes before I invite the speaker for the night as thou knowest not what is the way of the spirit nor how bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child the processes the procedures of the spirit that take place in such a way that is obviously oblivious to the mind of the natural man are you with me but you must know that if god is walking it means his spirit is working and if God stops working it means his spirit has stopped working you can continue working if the spirit of God is not working but that work is not a work of God and so if God is working the first thing he does is that he unveils that work he begins to do that work in his spirit like a womb If that spirit, if the, if the work of God is trapped in the Holy Ghost like a womb, seeking alignment with mortal man, so that that which has hashed in the womb of the Holy Spirit can find expression. Are you with me? The way we can know that that work has begun is when the Holy Spirit finds a man and then we now study what he is doing with the man. Then we will know what he had in mind that was in his womb. Exactly. Let me give you a scripture. Turn with me to Acts chapter 2. What we are trying to achieve in this conference, we are peeped a little into the womb of the Spirit because the church of Jesus needs direction now. And we are trying to point believers. In the nations of the world to the emphasis and the present revelation position that we have found in the spirit which God has already begun to implement although on a low key status Acts chapter 2 quickly in Acts chapter 2 Verse 41, the Bible says, Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And that same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. You see, I was supposed to read the scripture before this. And the scripture I was supposed to read was Psalms 110, verse 1 to 3. What led to the outpouring of the Spirit is in Psalms 110 verse 1 to 3. And in the book of Psalms 110, if you read, you will find out that God the Father had made a promise to God the Son. He had told him to sit down on, at his right hand until he, the Father, makes all his enemies his footstool. So it was a kingdom vision that David saw. And in this kingdom vision, Jesus was given an administrative throne. For those of you that have watched Game of Thrones, you know there is a functionary in the kingdom called the hand of the king. The Bible is a kingdom book. Anything that will make you comprehend kingdom realities will make you closer to the Bible. Make you understand the context in which the Bible is written. So when the father told Jesus, sit down at my right hand, he was not saying sit here. He was saying, 
assume an administrative capacity until I make your enemies to bow at your feet. Because it is the administrative office that Jesus occupies is the office of the Christ. And it is that office that creates the mediatorial role that Jesus pray, plays on our behalf. For instance, if you pray now, your prayers cannot get to the Father except it is processed through the office of the Christ. And God's response, the Father's response cannot come to you until it is processed through the office of the Christ. See, no man can get to the Father except by me. If the Father should speak directly to you, um, the implication will be that you will no longer be in this world. Because the energy with which that voice will transmit, it will be like thunder and fire. But it goes through the crucible of the office and it is processed and then the vibration is precipitated in your spirit through the infrastructure of the Holy Ghost. And when you pray, spirits don't understand this your language. It's not in this language that spirits communicate. All right. If you go to the book of Revelation chapter 5, you will see the prayers of the saints, how it ascends like incense and odors. That's how your prayer ascends into the sanctuary. That the mortals can relate with it. So you think because you, you, are, you prayed in deep aquaibo language, the, that chronic one where you were using proverbs and dark sentences, you were actually no. No. The prayer... <laughs> the prayer was captured by the immortals from your spirit when it was yet an incense when it was a desire that you needed Holy Ghost power to press to prosecute it was in that form that it was captured and it could come into that form because there was an office that did the processing sit down where and I will be the one to ensure that your enemies are brought to bow at your feet. That's Psalms 1, 1, 0, verse 1 and 2. Then verse 3 now says, and the Lord shall send, verse 2, sorry, now says, the Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. That means in keeping with the promise of the Father to bring the enemies to Jesus' feet. He had to send the rod of his strength, the Holy Ghost. So what led to the day of Pentecost was a promise that God made to his son. Who he had now made the administrator. So that he functions in the capacity of a true heir. To manage the kingdom on his behalf. So the Holy Spirit now came as a result of that promise. Are you with me? That means the intentions that God had. Was in the womb of the Holy Spirit. Are you with me? And if we are going to know the intention that the spirit has, that womb must be unveiled. And the unveiling of that womb can only be done in one way. When we see what the Holy Spirit does to the people that align with him for the implementation of his program. It is in their life that we see the unveiling. Acts chapter 2. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things in common. Let me take 45 as a case study. They sold their possessions. And goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. This is the civilization that the Holy Spirit began to implement. These are the things, the policies that he had in his womb. And because it is illegal for the Holy Spirit to operate upon the face of the earth without the support, the alignment, the agreement of a man, because this is two-dimension, three-dimensional world is not a world meant for spirits. The world meant for men. And when God created man, he didn't take him to heaven. 
He created man. Where did he put him? On eight three dimensional wall so that man can be God's representative in this realm. Because man is not spirit, it is God that is spirit. And if man is going to align with God, are you with me? Or God wants to implement something upon the face of the earth and man refuses to align with him, that thing will wait until a generation comes that is willing to align with God. Because this is man's realm. And it's only that which man aligns with that we find expression here. So if we want to know what was in the womb of the spirit of God is littered across the entire book of Acts of the Apostles, you will see what God did with men when they aligned with him. If you can read those rooms, those writings that they manifested, then you will know what God had in mind. And the scripture I read indicated that God arrested their possessiveness to property. Alright? It was the spirit that did that. We didn't know he had that in mind until he began to implement that protocol in the lives of those believers. People went under the influence of the Holy Spirit and sold lands. That's not what you do naturally. Your sea of oaths that you have in a secret fire is hidden away in a black box. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because you can convert that sea of oak and the land to money anytime you want. These guys under the influence of the spirit sold land. Parted the money to every man as they had need. What does that look like? Waste. Same waste principle. It doesn't look intelligent. It doesn't look smart. But that's what the Holy Ghost will make out of you. Someone that doesn't look smart. And it will look as if you are wasting. Until a day will come. Where the immortal will speak. As long as the earth remains. As long as they still call your city just. As long as then unto you will be given keys of the kingdom of heaven. You will be operating not on the basis of other men but on the basis of what he had said that has created a new set of possibilities and seasons. For you. Now so these guys were selling houses and then they parted the money to the brethren as they had need. That's not what a human being would do. But they did willingly under the influence of the Holy Spirit. I know that this land thing, land sales was a spectacle. The unbelievers looked at them and said, are they normal? You will be operating not on the basis of other men, but on the basis of what he had said that has created a new set of possibilities and seasons. Right? Now, so these guys were selling houses. And then they parted the money to the brethren as they had need. That's not what a human being would do. But they did willingly under the influence of the Holy Spirit. I know that this land thing, land sales was a spectacle. The unbelievers looked at them and said, are they normal? All right. This guy called Barnabas was a Levite. And you know, Levites don't own property. Seems he went for a missionary escapade and prayed for somebody, and somebody got healed, got blessed, and then gave him a landed property. For such a man, land we have so much value. Because probably that's the first land he was owning. And the hand of the Holy Ghost came upon him so strong. And he sold the land and all of the money. You could see him shaking under the influence of the Holy Ghost. Brought the money, put on the apostles, at the apostles' feet. It was the Holy Ghost doing it. Why do you think God judged Ananias and Sapphira? Because it was not the Holy Ghost that did that thing they wanted to do. Because the Holy Spirit himself said, Why are you lying against me? I know the people I fell upon. 
to do this kind of thing. I didn't fall on you. The unveiling. Because when the unveiling begins, there will be a lot of counterfeits that will rise. But you know what? In the day of the unveiling, the Holy Spirit will reveal who we fell on. We have so many counterfeits, so many fakes, so many things going on side by side. And men have forgotten that you can never rise in glory except there was a season when you wasted. It's out of the ashes of your dying that a new day breaks and in that day of destiny you are given the spirit of a judge to turn the beast of reckless wickedness that has wasted the territory to turn them back to flight. That's why the Bible says that they quench the violence of fire. They escape the edge of the sword. They turn the they, they stop the mouth of lions and turn the armies of the aliens to flight. Those were men that have wasted for long. You have no credit. There are no megabytes in your name if you did not waste long enough. He said, I know who I fell upon. I know who I told to give land. You were not among them. Why do you lie against the Holy Ghost? Because if Peter said that, then the Holy Ghost told Peter, Hey, he's lying against me. He's lying against me. So Peter now said, Why do why? How did it come to your heart to lie against the Holy Because there will be men that want to manifest that they not waste. The Holy Ghost will cry, you are lying. It is only through your life that we will know what God is doing. I and the children that are given unto me, we are for signs. You see, the signs and wonders there actually mean we determine, we are the ones that reveal prophetic times and seasons. Because signs and wonders talked about the um, wonders of the sky, the sun, the moon, the star. And you know that the sun, moon, and star were placed in the sky for the purpose of timing, not for light. He, he created two great lights. The greater in the day, the lesser in the night. For what? For times. To mark times and seasons, days and years, not for light. So the sons that are given unto the Lord are the only end signs that a generation has to know what God is doing. Because when that which is in the spirit of God is unveiled, you will see the signature of his working manifesting through their obedience as they waste. There's only men that have a record of waste that can rise in glory. I tell you, the many years of wasting is about to be brought into account and a new set of heralds about to awake and arise Woo! the tide we shift so bad you will not be able to recognize what we celebrate today mm. mantles held up in the heavens and thrones unoccupied over territories that is responsible for the level of invasion that we have experienced is an all-time high invasion of the land and of the church but wasting men are about to rise and from mid this year god will make a statement in nigeria many days and the cycles have been accomplished now men will find the reality of the wasting that they have experienced we we'll welcome you to unveiling the glory
I know somebody told you you were wasting. So you got angry and said, no, I need to do something good with my life. The only thing the immortals can understand because Jesus, Jesus entered into the spirit and when he understood it, this is not waste. This is, this is a preparation for my burial. And no herald went out to tell anybody that there was a burial ceremony coming up. The only people that knew about the burial were the people he told I prophecy not the the marker for my death is a Passover and even though the people that were planning the death say let's avoid that day it still fell on that day because it was not in their hands it was an appointed time and then suddenly a woman shows up she doesn't know why she's there but it was the memory of her deliverance that she thought was the reason she never knew that there was a barrier you will begin to navigate to the place you need to be by wasting. And maybe you'll be going through terrible times and you say, God has abandoned me. Men like Simeon knew better. For many years, he prayed with intercession, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And it was revealed to him by the Holy Ghost that he will not see death until he has seen the Lord's Christ. He came into the temple by the Spirit. There was no, inv there was no invitation card. There was no notification. No WhatsApp flyer. Out of the cave of wasting. He knew his day of unveiling had come. That was when he stood about a secret that only him and God had for many years. Now, let us thou thy servant depart in peace for my eyes have seen the salvation before the face of all people. A light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people is Israel. That was when we knew there was a secret. That day, the songs that were given unto Yahushua, that they were unveiled, they were, they were released. And that was a sign that a new timing had begun. God had to raise a priesthood to dedicate Jesus, not the Levitical priesthood. And that's why he preserved that man. He said, you will be the priest to dedicate my son. Because of that, you will not die until you see the consolation of Israel. They came and stood the day, him and prophetess Anne. The Levitical priest had no, no space on ground. Very soon you will begin to see times and opportunities intersecting. All kinds of stuff. And the old players will not be there. Grace and authority will be given unto the sons of men. Men that have wasted long enough until they doubt their doubt, waiting for the consolation of Israel. That's why we came. We came because it's a time of appointment. We are coming into alignment with a season that has been building, building so much wasting, so much wasting, so much waste. Now there is going to be a proclamation. Therefore, the redeemed of the Lord shall return. They shall come with singing unto Zion. An everlasting song shall be upon their heads. They shall proclaim, we will stand on the mountains in Manway again and say, The enemy almost entered, but another day has broken because he has spoken. We will stand upon the mountains of the Mambila Plateau. As we look over the nation, we will see how weak the things that fought us were. We, we, look, we look helpless now, but he's about to speak because right now he understands the ways. He understands.
Touching. So many men have been wasting doing ministry you've not seen the kind of results that you expected everything going haywire finances drowning all kinds of things happening but yet you are still pressing you don't know why you are pressing but you are pressing yeah it's an alabaster box mm, there's some some ointment right there judas is carry out has already said you are wasting according to the indices of the economy this kind of thing is a waste and it doesn't make sense and you're still going and going and going but very soon very soon jesus is about to understand it the, the meaning of the waste is about to be articulated it's it's being processed right now with the computers and very soon the meaning will come and when it comes jesus will make a proclamation then a new season comes and nothing can reverse it nothing can stop it then the sons of god after the new order of peaceful they are driven out of the cave like simeon they begin to unveil secrets that day the levitical purpose that his ministry ascended because he was very active when god went ahead to look for a replacement one more time we want to pray and we want to say god almighty we came so that we can align and i celebrate with you all of you that have been wasting for a long time i celebrate with you because the lord has understood the lord has understood the lord has understood i speak to those that are listening in on the internet and your life has been a track but you've been going with god i want to say god has understood jesus has understood the one that spoke and creation came into being he is about to speak again he is about to make a proclamation again he is about to decree again Ah, 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 Adonai. Elohim. He's about to speak. until he speaks i know you gave your car away i know you have to do some crazy stuff everybody is saying you have gone nuts but you will not stop wasting until he speaks 
I speak to me that are waste on the backside of the wilderness doing something that is crazy. Even believers say hey, you are wasting it. This is a waste. People that do not understand say you are wasting. You could have done something else, something better with your life, but you decided to waste. Jehovah is coming for you. He's 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 coming for you. Forty days of fasting. Three days of dry fasting. Seven days of fasting. will not understand from one fasting to another fasting 40 days 21 days 35 days 7 days dry nothing responding finances are flat all kinds of things all kinds of disappointment all kinds of embarrassment the waste is counting. The waste is accumulating. And when he understood, 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 when he understood some people don't wait long enough for him to understand. But out of the ashes of your dying today, I see the breaking of a brand new day in which the name of the Lord is glorified. Can we sing that song two times before I leave the stage?
people struggling to be sick, hoping that his shadow might touch. You know, prior to this time, they were locking him up in prison houses, stocks and chains. Do you, re do you, do you realize that when his shadow began to heal the sick, no more locking? You know, you remember the prayer they prayed in the book of Acts chapter 4? Lord, behold, their threats and grant that with, with boldness we might speak thy word by granting that signs and wonders be done in the name of the holy child Jesus. That was a prayer. So the answer to persecution is more glory. Yes. There is a glory that will come upon you. No security apparatus in Nigeria can, can look for you to arrest. They forgot about Peter's case. When his shadow began to heal his is that so is that a man you can arrest? No, sir. No. There, there, are, there are many more things about him we don't know. But the one we know for now is that his shadow can. The persecution story. It's only revival that can cure Nigeria. Jesus is going to analyze your waist and then he will speak then when he speaks a new day rises for many of us that new day begins next month which is June many of us many of us some people know what I'm talking about in the spiritual calendar of heaven some people know about June For many of us, he will speak. And a new set of possibilities will begin to find expression. There is a day in which the Lord is glorified. Because in that day, the mountains will have to be debased. The valleys will have to be elevated. The ox and the cedars of Lebanon will have to be cut down. The stones will have to be gathered out. Because only the Messiah will be seen and exalted in that day. There is a day in which the Lord alone is glorified. And you will see that day so strong in this nation so strong because the bible says dead that fell dead that stumbled they were once kid dead with strength the guys that fell were not were not were not were not weakly when their strength became robust it was in that same moment that they stood. and so we pray tonight oh god as we come to congregate before your presence there has been an accumulation of wasting. Many things that have not yet fructified. Oh, I even see somebody that um, you were in serious security. You were secure. And then God gave you an instruction. You left your security. And now everybody is saying, what a fool. And when he understood... He said, Lord, we ask that you speak again. Speak again. Speak again.